Africa, stunning from sea to sky. The continent where mountains soar and giants roam. But uncontrolled human activity is threatening this magnificent beauty. To save these landscapes and its rich flora and fauna, the Worldwide Fund for Nature, WWF, has set up camp on the African Rift Lakes region to help communities live in harmony with nature. WWF's mission is to stop the degradation of the planet's natural environment. Very often governments are not all that efficient, uh, they're fairly bureaucratic, also they don't have capacity. There is also very limited appreciation of the fact that in fact in places like Africa, in the south generally, that depend so much on their biodiversity, the main basis for development is the biodiversity, the ecosystems and the services and the goods that they provide. If we don't have our forests, if we don't have water, if we don't protect our soil, our fallback is very limited. We're not a very industrialized continent. The African Rift Lakes region spans eight countries. From the Abyssinian abysses of Ethiopia, where the Blue Nile originates, to Congo's primate playgrounds, from the terraced hilltops of Uganda to the savanna sunsets in Kenya, from Tanzania where elephants are on parade, to the natural world wonder of Zambia, from Burundi's lush rivers to Rwanda, the front row seat to the jungle. With its dramatic rift valleys and the world's oldest, largest and deepest freshwater systems flowing through it, the African Rift Lakes region is an area of exceptional biodiversity and is a global top priority for conservation. It is one of the 35 globally outstanding priority places identified by the Worldwide Fund for Nature, WWF. Africa's rich natural resources are central to national and local economies and directly support tens of millions of livelihoods. Tourism is one of the leading economic sectors in East Africa and has become the largest foreign revenue earner for countries such as Kenya. Gorilla tourism has great potential in the greater Virunga landscape and is an important economic venture that greatly benefits the governments of Rwanda, Uganda and DRC. The African Rift Lakes region is home to the entire world population of the critically endangered mountain gorillas. About 40 to 45 percent of the endangered eastern chimpanzee population is also found in the African Rift Lakes region. The Serengeti Mara ecosystem is a major source of income for Kenya and Tanzania at national and local levels. The African Rift Lakes region is also rich in bird life and is distinguished for spectacular congregations of water birds, including lesser flamingo. The once rich, fertile soils and predictable rainfall drew masses here, making the African Rift Lakes one of Africa's most densely populated regions in Africa. But things are changing. The pressing development needs of a rapidly growing population have put pressure on natural resources, creating imbalances leading to environmental degradation, a threat to both the survival of poor communities and to natural resources. Poverty has also become prevalent. Communities are grappling with a lack of power, security and livelihoods. The African Rift Lakes region brings together three distinct but interlinked regions, the Albertine Rift, the African Great Lakes and the Eastern or Gregorian Rift, covering nine landscapes. For half a century, the Worldwide Fund for Nature has worked in Africa to provide innovative solutions to conserve species and their habitats, to maintain key ecological services and secure livelihoods for the people. 
WWF aims to ensure that the rich tapestry of forests, rivers and lakes of the Africa Rift Lakes region is effectively managed and conserved to sustain locally and globally important ecosystem services and biodiversity. Within ARL we, we operate, we, we have got three key thematic areas that we are uh, uh, pursuing and these, uh, these are protected area management, water resources management and forest resources management. Our effort in conserving species such as mountain gorillas is actually uh, we are working in partnership with the International Gorilla Conservation Program. So they do most of that work uh, as partners where we work together. Conservation activities in these landscapes are funded by the Swedish International Development Agency, SIDA. Within the Africa Reflex region, where WWF involves civil society in landscape work uh, by building on their institutional and technical capacity, and that of their networks to uh, tackle uh, major drivers of environmental degradation within the Africa Reflex transboundary region using a rights based approach. The Mau Mara Serengeti landscape in Kenya and Tanzania is one of the four Africa Rift Lakes priority landscapes. The Mau Mara program on the Kenyan side primarily focuses on three thematic areas forest resources management in upstream catchment areas, water resources management across the landscape with focus on the Mara River Basin, and flagship species management in and around the wildlife conservation areas. On water resources management, we're actually looking at uh, our work is focused on the freshwater resources and establishing piloting and scaling up the implementation of integrated uh, water resources management and also continuing to evolve models and projects for the water sector reforms in the, in the countries within the region. So priority is given to more water stressed environments such as the, the Lake Naivasha uh, Basin also found, and also in the Mau Mara Serengeti uh, uh, area and the Lake Albert Kioga Assembly catchment landscape. Over time, WWF has mobilized and organized communities and civil society organizations towards sustainable management of these resources by using rights-based approaches and supporting community-based participatory approaches that have secured an enabling environment through policy dialogue, advocacy and legislative reforms in forestry, water and wildlife management. WWF have assisted us a lot. They have trained us and they have came uh, to inform us about the forest bills which are also which is still going on with the government discussion is going on that forest bill will enable us as CFA now to get benefits uh, from the forest all the revenues that are caught from the forest has to be shared with the members of the community living along the forest. The community around here were looking at this forest as if it belonged to the government and they had nothing to do with it. You could find that they were entering into the forest and actually taking out products like uh, locking. They were cutting trees, they were burning charcoal, they were doing illegal grazing. All those encroachment uh, activities was going on before our CFA was, was involved in actually teaching, creating awareness in the community that if we destroy this forest, we are going to, to, we are going to suffer also. With support from WWF, Water Resource User Associations, RUA, have been established along the catchments of the Mara River in Kenya and Tanzania. The Mara River is the only perennial river here and plays a vital ecological role in the wildlife migration between the two reserves, particularly the spectacular annual wildebeest migration that is considered one of the wonders of the world under UNESCO World Heritage Sites. The Mara River is the lifeline of the Maasai Mara and Serengeti game reserves. The Mara River Water Association was formed in 2003 
emanating from concerns within the community on the dwindling water resources and also the destruction of the forested Mao area. This caused the variability in terms of water provision and was becoming a stress to the farming community, the pastoralist community and also the, the irrigation community within, within this particular basin. have a weather station. That weather station basically gives information and that information is basically trans is transmitted to the community through the association and gives them, on gives them better judgment in terms of how to plant and when to plant. The Payment for Ecosystem Services PES model is being adopted in the landscape where downstream users are able to support conservation and good agricultural initiatives in the upper catchment. This will lead to sustained flows and better water quality in the Mara River. With the government of Sweden's support, Nyangore's Water Resources Users Association, RUA, is piloting payment for environmental services. The support has helped build the capacity of the association to provide empirical data to influence private sector to support the PES initiative. Wakati tulipo anza hizi interventions, tumekucha kuwana ya kwamba imesaidia kwanza mchanga imekuwa retained kwa shamba. Na file file ata akidumia, akitumia dawa kupiga mimea, kunyunyizia mimea. Izo e, wakati wa mfua, iyo dawa ayoesi yoshua ipereke kule mtoni. The Mao Forest is the largest remaining indigenous mountain forest in East Africa and Kenya's largest water tower. The Mao Forest complex has over the past few decades been destroyed as a result of unplanned settlements, irregular forest land allocation and illegal extraction of forest resources. Widespread encroachment and degazettement of forest reserves have destroyed approximately a quarter of the Mao Forest's complex over the last 30 years. Taking advantage of the Forests Act 2005, that strongly advocates for community participation through community forest associations, CFAs, WWF has helped to build advocacy capacity of these institutions to promote participatory forest management. The ultimate goal of, of working with civil society uh, is, is to ensure that the people of the Africa Reflex region uh, are effectively controlling the decisions and receiving full benefits from the management of natural resources and exercising their full responsibility for ensuring that the key ecosystems and the habitats that they are sustainably managing deliver benefits to them and deliver benefits to nature. <laughs> With support from WWF, Water Resources Users Association has developed and is implementing a community-led subcatchment plan that outlines priority interventions and forms the basis for new partnerships for conservation and promoting sustainable livelihood options for communities. Activities such as terracing to control soil erosion, agroforestry and introduction of upgraded fodder crops have improved productivity and incomes for farmers. In Uganda, 
WWF is implementing conservation initiatives and livelihood promotion interventions in partnership with communities in the Semuliki catchment with the aim of generating community-based commitment towards restoration of degraded and collapsing riverbanks. When we came in with this project, uh, the first thing we did was interacting with the community to get to understand what the project is all about, I mean, I mean the, the situation is all about. And among the causes that they were able to identify was the, the continuous human interaction between the, the, the banks of River Semeliki. I mean, interaction of human between the banks of River Semeliki and, and, uh, and the activities they carry, out, they carry out. The community in the Semuliki catchment is pastoralist and keep very large herds of cattle where grazing is done communally. Watering points therefore accommodate over 10,000 heads of cattle and other domestic livestock, often leading to overgrazing, soil erosion, siltation of the river affecting both water quality and quantity. Collapsing of the banks is leading to a shift in the river course towards the Ugandan side. But as a result of the partnerships with local organizations, the local government of Ntoroko district and communities, WWF is supporting the community to restore riverbank sections of this important river. I'm standing right next to the, river, the banks of River Semuliki. As, as you can see in front, these are regenerated banks of River Semuliki. The situation before was worse than this. Today you're seeing green, then it was bare land. The community identified and demarcated hotspot areas on the banks that have been restored and reinforced with planting bamboo. The WWF gave us 12 million. million. It was for construction, the fences, and try to sensitize people about how to protect the environment. And we as a group, we did that because we had constructed a fence, Kayanza there, and even we have other fences around which are trying to protect the riverbanks. Through partnerships with the Jesse's Wash program, the community is receiving water filtering equipment that has helped improve the quality of water for domestic use and reduced incidences of waterborne diseases, including Bilhazia. Having seen the success of their efforts, communities have grown enthusiastic about protecting their own environment. They have formed water user associations and draft community bylaws for protecting the rehabilitated sections of the river are already in place. We live in a very dynamic world. Things change almost every day around us. So uh, it's not enough to say that we have reached this point. This is uh, a kind of work that needs constant support, constant push but also allowing the communities to own the process. So we, we are the facilitators, we step back, provide experience, provide some resources, but they have to own for this thing to go forward. With the increasing awareness and sustainable use of natural resources, the Worldwide Fund for Nature is achieving its goal of building a future in which humans live in harmony with nature.